Hi, I'm Nairi, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be painting this super cute Happy Easter greeting card in watercolour paint. It's part of a series of tutorials that I'm doing, so if you'd like to see any of my other videos just click on the links in the description below. Also, if you'd like to paint along with me, you can download all of my design outlines free from my website. Again, the link is in the description below. If you don't have watercolour paint but still want to make a beautiful greeting card for someone you love, you can download them, print them and colour them in however you like. To help you navigate this tutorial, I've included timestamps below so you can jump to whatever section of the video you need. And if I'm going too fast, just hit pause and take your time. So let's get started now. First I'll take you through the colours I've used, um, how I mix them, and I'll guide you step by step through the process of creating your very own super cute Happy Easter greeting card. I think cards are a great way to learn to paint watercolour. They're fun, easy, simple, and you can practice techniques. Plus at the end of it you've got something super cute to give to someone. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so today we're going to be painting this really cute little fairy. Um, she's hugging her Easter bunny and she's holding a little basket of eggs. So it's a little Easter themed fairy greeting card. Um, and I'll talk you through the colours that are going to be used in this one. Um, as usual, I'm using the Sminka Aquadrop paints. Um, they're what I like using, but you can use any watercolour paint that you have. Um, this colour here is magenta. Then we've got cyan blue. This is ruby red. Vermilion Red and Brilliant Orange, this is amethy Amethyst Violet, Neutral Grey, Indian Yellow, Jade Green and Lemon Yellow there in the centre. Um, most of the colours in this one I've actually just used straight out of the bottles. There's just a couple of colours I've mixed up. So um, as for my last one it is the skin colour and the hair colour so I'll just mix those with you now. The hair colour is a combination of the Indian Yellow and Sorry, the Indian yellow is the darker one, and the lemon yellow, I pointed to the wrong one. Um, so we'll just mix that up. It's, it's pretty much, I've got, sorry, I should also talk you through. You'll see I've got two bowls of water here. One I use to clean my brush, and the other I use to get um, clean water to dilute the colours, and that's just so that you don't get any muddying of the colours um, affected by the pigments that are in your dirty water. Um, so what I also use is a test strip of the, the test strip of the paper that I paint on. Um, just any old offcut is fine. Um, it's really good just to try your colours out um, before you actually put them onto your painting. So you can mix up all your colours and check that you're happy with them before you even start painting. That one actually looks fine. So that was it's roughly 50-50 of those two yellows. Um, the other colour mixed in this is the skin colour, and that's actually a combination of the vermilion red. I'll just put a little bit there um, and the brilliant orange and again I'll just put a little bit here rinse off my brush uh, mix them up and then I'll just um, take a little bit off to the side and clean that off get some fresh water let's have a look at the colour you've got to dilute it a huge amount for the skin yeah that's good. So a combination of the vermilion red and the brilliant orange for the skin colour. And that's all the colours that we're going to mix. Um, before I get started with actually painting it, I'll just quickly show you, um, I haven't talked before that I actually use a hot press paper. With watercolour paper you can get hot press, cold press or rough. Um, and hot press is the smoothest finished surface. Cold press is the next and rough is the roughest. And that that creates a texture on the paper. Because my pictures that I tend to do are quite detailed, I like the hot press. Um, some of my paintings I also go over with coloured pencils um, and because of the smoother paper it just allows me to get the look that I like. So the paper I'm actually painting on today is the Archer's um, Aquarelle watercolour 300 gram hot press paper. It's actually not my favourite paper. Mo a lot of people paint on this paper and, and really love it. My favourite is actually this one. It's Fabriano Artistico Hot Press 100% Cotton 300 gram again um, watercolour paper. Um, so if you're interested in my personal preference it's that one um, but Arches is a massively popular uh, paper. Anyway let's start painting. The only other thing apart from the colours that we'll need today is an art, an art masking fluid or you can use um, a white gouache. So um, this is to get the white spots on the skirt. I tend to like masking it off. That just keeps the paper the original colour and stops paint going on it. You can just paint the whole thing and then put a white gouache over the top. So 
whichever you have or is your preference, um, but I'll be using the uh, masking fluid. And we might actually do that right at the start to get it to, to start drying. Make sure you use a really old brush. Oh my gosh, I can't even get it open. Hang on a second. Um, make sure, <laughs> as you can see here, it's like a really, when it dries, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a gum. Um, so what you want to do is make sure you use a really old brush um, because it will damage your good brushes. So just use an old cheap brush. What I'm going to do is just put little little dots for on the skirt. So that's it now you've just got to wait for that to dry and um, if you can wash your brush off so we want to stay away from that while it's drying so let's start on the grass um the grass what i like to do first is put down just some um, lemon yellow by itself um, and it's just to give it a, a brightness Ooh, that's quite bright So it's just a base coat of the lemon yellow and now I'll just leave that to dry. Uh, I think what I'll do next is the t-shirt and what I'm going to do is wet on wet for that. So what we're going to do is get some clean water and wet down. Wet down the, sorry, <laughs> what we do is get some clean water and wet down the t-shirt. Um, the paint will only go where the water is. so. Um, Make sure you're pretty accurate on where you put your water. If you, um, wherever you put it, the paint's going to go. So um, you want to contain it uh, within the area that you want the paint. Now you want the paper quite wet, but you don't want it sort of puddling and um, creating pools of water um, on it. So. Um, it's one of those things that's, that well, I don't get it right every time that's for sure um, and it takes a bit of just trial and error really um, even if you if you don't have enough water the paint won't sort of travel and if you have too much water um, yeah it can also not travel it can kind of puddle and pull and uh, but it doesn't really matter if it um, not on something this size if it doesn't quite do what you want uh, you can always dab it off with a paper towel and try again. So it's actually a really good size project just to practice on. Um, and don't worry too much. Every time you do it, you'll you'll learn a bit more. So I've wet, wetted that down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit. And again, I'm going to use a test strip. Ah, oh, actually, it doesn't matter too much. So I'm getting some of the magenta and just putting that around here. And that will start traveling out, and then I'm going to get some of the amethyst violet. And now I'm looking for somewhere else I can work which isn't um, next to something that's wet. So this grass is already dried, so um, oh, I didn't show you how to mix the grass color, but anyway, the grass color is um, jade green, well, that I've used, in, and this one is jade green and lemon yellow. If you're happy with it then I actually do the grass in a number of layers um, so it doesn't really matter too much but now I'm just going to put the first sort of light green layer down I, I tend to have the paper um, dry um, and then put down some of the green Um, you'll see it's all patchy and uneven that's fine grass isn't the same green on every part so again don't worry about don't worry about being perfect it's just have fun with it and um, yeah it'll work out I'm sure it will I forgot about the basket colors I think I'll use burnt sienna and amber for that sorry about that I um, missed a couple of colors out that I'm gonna need to use so amber I might yet use some burnt umber but um, let's see how it turns out. So um, I'm just going to come in, gosh, so this is amber. I'm just going to come in and put a base coat of that down. 
So this is just um, very diluted magenta going on the inside of the ladies um, That t-shirt's now dry so what I'm actually going to do is wet it <laughs> again um, and just sort of deepen some of the colours. So we're going to wet on wet again. Now um, I was checking whether the paint was dry before I came out and wet it again. You might think that's a bit strange but um, you want, if you've got paint down, you want the layer to fully dry uh, before you put more paint on. Um, and the reason for that is if the paint isn't fully dry and you come and put more paint on, it will actually cause the paint to, it's, what, it's called blooming. Um, and um, you're adding, adding water to not fully dry watercolour paint will pick up the pigment and it will carry it with the water and make a water mark. So the magenta, I'm, I'm basically doing a circle around the heart really, um, and then it lightens out from there. Hmm, it's actually blooming a bit there, so um, you have to work quite quick with wet on wet, because if it starts drying and then you um, add more paint or water, um, it will bloom. So I think I have slightly there, but we'll have a look as it dries. Uh, I could probably work back on this basket now. Coming into this side, um, I'm going to put my shadow in there. So I just rinse my brush, dab most of the water off, and now I'm just softening that so it blends out. Just putting a tiny bit of it on the shadow side. So sorry, I'm putting a tiny bit of the burnt sienna on the shadow side of the handle. Uh, and now I'll just leave that to dry. And so now I'm just looking for dry areas to work with. I'm going to do the top, these top, uh, the two top halves of the wings. So this is wet on wet. So we're going to get the wing wet. I am only wet the area that you want the paint to travel. Um, and then we'll apply the pigment after that. When I do the wet on wet, because there's so much water on the paper, it dilutes the paint a lot and makes it a lot lighter. So often I'll go in, oh, there we go. I didn't have enough water on when I was doing the t-shirt. Um, with less diluted pigment or straight pigment. Um, because the water, as you see, will, will dilute it. So that was the magenta on the tip, and this is the cyan blue. And you can see it's not travelling as well here. That's There's a lot of water pooling there. So now I'm just moving the paint where I want it if it hasn't gone um, quite where I want. I'm actually going to lift a bit of that pink off, magenta off. I'm finding it a bit intense, so just lift some of that off. It's just a base coat. Um, it's one thing, um, I think when you're starting to paint you, you might think that artists um, paint one layer and that's it and it's the first layer they put down and looks really good and it's just not the case. Like it doesn't matter what paint you use. I've painted with acrylics and watercolour and um, oils. It, you, you, yeah, it, doesn't, it, it hasn't mattered what medium I've used. I've always built up layers to get something looking good. So don't be hard on yourself if you, you know, if you put your first layer down and it doesn't look very good, it really doesn't matter and um, neither does mine. So just take your time and just keep, just if you're really patient and just, um, if it doesn't look right, let it dry, do another layer. Let it dry, do another layer, let it dry, do another layer. And you will get there. So I'm just applying the paint right on the very edge because um, that's the bit that I'm going to want to be the boldest in colour. And then I'm letting the water do most of the work. You can see it doesn't, it's, it's not carrying the paint exactly how I want, but then I can wash my brush off, wet it, dab off um, most of the water and then actually move the paint with the paintbrush. 
the grass has since dried so we can come back in I'm gonna go slightly darker by bringing in more of the slightly it's quite dark but I'm bringing in more of the jade green Um, I do still want a slightly more intense purple just on these bits. Just a tiny amount. Now I'm going to rinse off my brush, um, take off most of the water, and then just draw that. Um, you just go along the edge where it's wet and it's sort of half on half off and it draws the paint wherever you then go because you've got more water on the brush so the paint will travel and that will create the gradient. So now I'm just painting more of the burnt sienna um, onto these little details in the basket. So now I'm going to come in with more jade green mixed into the um, lemon yellow just to get darker again and create some even deeper, deeper greens. I'm going to come back onto these wings now. Um, so I'm just going to add water again now that they are dry I'm just going to wet it and like a bit more of a transition um, of the cyan blue out as well so I just put a bit of that down and that's it um, I'll just leave that to dry now and then come in on this other side again putting water down Okay, now that t-shirt's dry, um, I'm just going to put a little magenta heart in the centre. Let's try down here so we can put some magenta onto the skirt as well. So the one thing you want to do, um, one, the one thing you want to check uh, before you put your magenta onto the skirt is that your, um, if you're using masking fluid, that your masking fluid is dry. Uh, so this is, this is. So now I'm just getting the magenta on. You can just paint over the masking fluid and as long as your masking fluid is dry, you won't end up with any paint underneath. Um, so this is the Brilliant Orange. And I'm just painting it on. It's wet on dry and I'm just not... I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just not painting the centre of the flower. Now this is all dry, uh, that side may not be yet, but this side is, so I'm going to come in um, and do the wet on wet on the lower half of the wing. I'm just going to paint a base layer, so quite light, of the amethyst violet onto the shoes. Come in and add a bit more colour to these flowers. So I've just put it on around the circle, uh, around the centre, and then rinsed my brush off, dabbed off most of the water, and um, and just brushed around where I just put the pigment on. Right, those shoes have 
dry now so I'll come in and put some shadow in and again wash your brush off um, dab off most of the water and then you can come back and just soften the line if you want to okay so I'll go back to the wet on wet and just get a bit more intensity of the colour in these wings. Now if you want to take some of the pigment off you can do just that, put your um, dab most of the water off your brush and come back on and, and it will draw it off the paper. So as long as there's less water on your brush than there is on the paper, um, it will draw some of the pigment off. Just coming in with a bit more of the amethyst violet just to deepen that shadow under the shoe. Just getting the skin colour. Mm, wet again, it's dried out in my palette. Okay, when you apply your skin colour, if you're not too sure, go lighter than you think. Because um, you can, we're going to build up um, shadows. Um, but also you can always make it darker. It is a lot harder to try and make watercolour lighter once you've put it on the paper. So, go, if in doubt, go lighter. Um, and we can always adjust it as we go. So the base layer of the skin literally is, I'm not doing any shading, I'm literally just painting on um, one layer everywhere of the same skin colour I mixed up. Because um, you're not putting a lot of paint down when you do the skin colour, um, it does dry really fast. So I'm going to do the, well I did my shadow on the side of the basket so the light's coming in from this direction. So we're going to apply a shadow um, to the other side. Now there'll be a bit of a shadow behind the bunny's leg, um, but most of the shadow will be up that side there. And then I rinse off my brush, take off most of the water, and then you can just soften that edge if you like it like that. And again, a bit of shadow down this side, there, and then the underside of the arm. Rinse off the brush, dab off most of the water, and just come down that edge to um, to soften. So we're going to have a shadow around the side of the face. So I'm just applying the dark paint there and I'm going to have a little bit here and behind where the hair's covering. So rinse off the brush, dab off most of the water and we'll come back and we'll just soften that line. Rinse off your brush, dab off the water and soften that line. Cool and we'll just let that dry. Now actually I might just do a bit more softening up here and I want to just take off I pull that shadow around a bit further than I want, so I'm actually drawing off some of the paint there. Right, and we'll let that dry. You can just add um, kind of little shadows into the eggs if you want a little bit more detail on them. So just on the side that isn't getting, if the sunlight's coming in this side, so the dark side of the eggs, you can add a little bit more shadowing. That skin's dry already, so I'm going to go back again. And just deepen that shadow a little bit more on the edge. I'm just taking off a bit of the pigment on the forehead because I made it too dark. There we go. Looks pretty good. So we'll come in next and do some work on the bunny. And I'm just gonna bunny's Mm. That is basically white, but I'm just using a tiny amount of super diluted neutral grey and that's just to create some shadow. So slight shadow under the arm, um, under the bunny's arm, under the, the little fairy girl's arm, just tucked in here. 
under here. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush, dab off most of the water, and again just soften. If it's not softening, you just need a little bit more water on your brush. Soften off those edges just a little bit so they're not a really harsh shadow line. I mean, it's so subtle. You can even come back while it's wet and, and just put a little bit more in if you want it just a little bit darker. Um, but it's really, really subtle shading. Bunny done. I wouldn't mind slightly more shading in the face, but let me just, just get slightly darker in here, slightly darker over here. Okay, rinse off the brush, dab off most of the water, and then we'll just soften that off a bit. Come in now, just do a little bit more magenta on the skirt. And just leave that to dry. Um, and the only thing we've got to do is her hair now, so just waiting for that face to dry. Ah! I put the pink on. <laughs> put the pink on before the bunny was dry, and you can see what's happened. So we'll just get some of that off. So you can just lift it off while it's still wet with that, um, a paper towel. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to get the yellow for the hair colour um, and dilute it right down so it's quite light and just put a base layer on the hair. Super light, even, no shading, just basically paint it on and fill it in. The face is dry so we can also do um, the little cheeks so the cheeks I like doing in Ruby Red, but they do have to be really diluted. Well, I like them really diluted, I should say. You don't have to, but I like them really diluted. So just put a little cheek in here. Oops, again, I just put it there. Um, it's gonna go into the hair because the hair's wet, so. It won't matter, but I'm being impatient. Once the um, skirt's fully dry, you can use um, a rubber cement pickup. Um, I mean, you can just peel off the, the masking fluid um, yourself with your finger if you want, but I find these rubber cement pickups really, uh, they just make it super easy. And they literally just pull the rubber cement off, so. And I'll just put some of some darker tones into the hair. So the only thing you want to do when you're doing this is just make sure that your brush strokes follow um, the direction that hair strands would lie. I actually would like it a little bit, um, like a little bit more of the Indian yellow one just to a sort of egg, a bit more egg yogi. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of that in for the next um, bit, next coat. And that's it.